This first article comes from the British Journal of Radiology. Magnetic resonance enterography is highly accurate for diagnosing the presence and activity and severity of Crohn's disease. Many of the imaging findings in Crohn's disease, particularly early on, are subtle, which leads to inter-observer variation in image interpretation. This study aims to investigate inter-observer variation regarding overall disease presence and activity in Crohn's disease. 20 radiologists participated in interpreting MRE datasets of 73 patients with Crohn's disease. Each dataset was read by three different radiologists who determined segmental disease presence, activity, and extraenteric manifestations based on their normal reporting practices. These radiologists also documented their diagnostic certainty of disease presence and activity in each bowel segment on a scale of 1 being the least certain to 6 being the most certain. For evaluation of disease presence, agreement was 68% for newly diagnosed Crohn's disease and 78% for relapsed Crohn's disease. Agreement for disease extent was 43% in newly diagnosed Crohn's and 53% for relapsed Crohn's. Inter-observer agreement was greater with more advanced disease. The findings in this study suggest that there is a reasonable amount of agreement between radiologists regarding the presence of Crohn's disease on MRE, while there is a less agreement as to the extent of disease. This next article comes from the American Journal of Radiology. Diagnosis, assessment of treatment response, and detection of complications of Crohn's disease has typically relied on imaging findings, including bowel wall thickening, abnormal intramural signal, perienteric inflammation, mucosal ulcerations, and hyperenhancement after IV contrast administration. Crohn's disease leads to an abnormal increase in mesenteric blood flow, which indirectly manifests as engorged mesenteric vasa recta and bowel wall hyperenhancement. As no imaging-based quantitative measures of mesenteric blood flow are routinely used in clinical practice, this study evaluates the use of velocity-encoded phase contrast MRI to measure mesenteric blood flow in patients with newly diagnosed Crohn's disease. 17 patients with newly diagnosed Crohn's underwent three MRI examinations over a period of six months, one at baseline, one at six weeks, and one at six months after diagnosis, which included the velocity-encoded phase contrast data set. Quantitative Blood flow measurements of the SMA, SMV, and aorta were evaluated to assess the degree of ileal inflammation using a standardized scaled score. Mesenteric blood flow was found to be quantifiable using these MRI acquisition methods. These flow velocities were also found to differ significantly between patients with ileal Crohn's and healthy patients. Dynamic flow changes were noted in patients with ileal Crohn's disease in response to medical therapy. Although this study was small in sample size, it does demonstrate that velocity-encoded phase contrast MR may have a future role in diagnosis and treatment monitoring for Crohn's disease. This next article comes from the Journal of Emergency Radiology. Some patients with low-risk penetrating abdominal trauma may undergo selective non-operative management in which they forgo surgery or laparotomy. The selection process for SNOM may be challenging, Most trauma centers use IV contrast-enhanced CT to evaluate penetrating abdominal trauma. However, bowel injury remains a major missed diagnosis, with associated morbidity and mortality. The use of triple contrast CT, that is oral, rectal, and IV contrast at once, has shown accuracy in predicting surgically important penetrating trauma injuries, but has been met with skepticism among surgeons and radiologists. This retrospective study aims to compare the diagnostic performance of single versus triple contrast CT for detection of penetrating abdominal injury. 143 patients with abdominal trauma who received a CT prior to laparotomy were included in the study. 45 patients were found to have bowel injury. 35 received single contrast. 10 received triple. 98 patients had no bowel injury at laparotomy, divided between 50% between single and triple contrast CT. The CT examinations were reviewed by radiologists and graded based on the probability of hollow viscous injury. The authors found that specificity and accuracy were higher with triple contrast than single contrast although their results were not statistically significant. This study suggests that triple contrast CT may be useful in the future triage of patients with penetrating trauma, although as noted by the authors, further studies are needed for confirmation. This next article also comes from the Journal of Emergency Radiology. Acute appendicitis is one of the most common causes of emergency surgery in pregnancy and can lead to maternal and fetal complications if there is a delayed or missed diagnosis. Appendicitis may be underdiagnosed in 25 to 50% of cases, Additionally, up to 23% of pregnant patients who undergo emergency surgery do not have appendicitis. Thus, imaging methods that can lead to timely and accurate diagnosis of appendicitis are important. This meta-analysis included eight studies which encompassed a combined total of 1,593 pregnant women with suspected appendicitis. 
Among the studies included, the prevalence of appendicitis was 54% in pregnant patients suspected to have appendicitis. The rate of perforation, a common complication of appendicitis, was found to increase with trimester, which indicates increasing difficulty diagnosing appendicitis later in pregnancy. Patients with suspected appendicitis and subsequent negative laparotomy was between 25 to 50 percent in pregnant patients, while the rate was 15 to 35 percent in non-pregnant patients. This meta-analysis also found a low diagnostic performance of ultrasound in determining appendicitis in pregnant women, with a sensitivity of 77 percent and specificity of 75 percent. The authors concluded that ultrasound has a low accuracy for appendicitis in pregnant women and that alternative imaging should be considered after negative or equivocal ultrasound. This last article comes from the Journal of Abdominal Radiology. Surgical resection plays a crucial role in the treatment of ovarian cancer. Both the surgical technique and patient morbidity and mortality are influenced by bowel involvement in ovarian cancer. Prior studies have found that neither abdominal or pelvic CT or MR are reliable for pre-surgical planning. This study aims to evaluate the diagnostic utility of computed tomography enterography, or CTE, in identifying depth of bowel invasion in ovarian cancer for the purposes of pre-surgical planning. Clinical and imaging data of 73 patients with histologically proven ovarian tubal or peritoneal cancer were analyzed. These patients had undergone an oral contrast protocol prior to undergoing preoperative CTE examination. These data sets were then interpreted by two experienced radiologists who were blinded to surgical and pathology results. The authors found that sigmoid and rectal involvement was not able to be reliably detected with CTE. They also found that CTE had a high sensitivity and specificity for pre-surgical diagnosis of small bowel invasion and a high specificity for large bowel invasion due to ovarian, tubal, and peritoneal cancers, and thus may be a good option for pre-surgical planning.